I admire this organization. I admire Lisa. I admire everybody here who volunteers so hard, who is a mentor. Um, and I also want to have a special shout out to Dilly because we do work together and I'm so proud of her. She's an amazing person and to know Dilly is to love her. Um, I want to talk tonight uh, a little bit about um, really to give you some examples of my career and how mentors made such a difference to me. Um, when I was a young woman, I got out of high school and I had no idea what I wanted to do. And I had, you know, various, you know, I worked in retail and, you know, lifeguarding and waitressing and, um, and nothing, you know, perfectly honorable career paths. Um, but I didn't think any of those would be what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. And so I lived in Florida and my parents recommended that I come to Northern Virginia and really just stay for a while, stay for a summer with my grandparents. Because I actually wasn't, you know, I wasn't going to go to college at that time. And so I lived with my grandparents and I got a job and I worked at Crabtree and Evelyn. <laughs> and, um, and, but they said, well, why don't you, um, and this, actually I realized I should update my bio on the website because I actually have almost 30 years of experience. It's been a while since I've uh, looked at that. Um, but uh, to give you an idea of how long ago I started in this job, um, in this industry, so I was actually going to be, my grandparents had a friend, and the friend was a typesetter. And so I was going to be, I don't know if, you know if a lot of you in this room know what a typesetter is, because that was back in the day before you had computers, you know, when I put things together to print stuff. And so um, I became an apprentice typesetter. And I was on my way to a job interview, and I was going to get my first typesetting job, and I got lost. And I didn't know where... I wrote the address down wrong, apparently, and so I walked into this building, and I was asking you, do you know where this place is? And I walked into a company, and they said, um, well, we don't know where this place is, because I had the address wrong, but they said, if you don't get the job, or if you don't find your interview, come back, because we need help. So I did. And I became basically an admin, you know, an administrative assistant. I had my first computer ever. I never touched a computer in my life. It had two floppy drives. It was very powerful. And, <laughs> and one of the first things I did, so my company had some of the first Novell, this is another glass book past, Novell's still around, but this is when Novell was like Microsoft, you know? And so Novell was king. And so we had the first Novell hardware file server. And so one of the first things I did brilliantly is um, if you, in tech world, if you map a drive, basically you're mapping you know, G to H or whatever, and so you have two drive, you know, two drive letters, in techie speak here, that are pointing to the same thing. So I map a drive, somebody showed me how to do that, I'm learning the ropes, you know, it's my as assistant job, but then I panicked because I didn't realize what I had done and I thought I just copied everything. So I deleted one of my drives, oh, wow. <laughs> which managed to delete all the files in the company. Oh, wow. And so um, my first mentor, the vice president and one of the co-owners of that company, instead of firing me immediately and sending me away to go be a typesetter, said, why did you do that? And I told him why. And he said, that kind of makes sense. <laughs> so why don't we get you some training so you're not dangerous anymore and take away your whole power privilege. <laughs> and I stayed there for 11 years. And in that 11 years, this man and my colleagues, and actually that company was a tech company, and you probably have never heard of this. They were the Model 204 experts. And Model 204 is a hierarchical database. <laughs> but the cool thing about that company is that a lot of the employees were women, techie women. And this was back in the 80s and 90s, you know, I mean. And so, you know, I, I was able to do everything. I was never a Model 204 specialist, but they had, they, they let me run the back office. So I did Oracle and OS2 and all these things. You don't really hear about that much anymore. And I was a network admin. I knew Novell. I knew Microsoft. I was a Microsoft certified engineer. But this man told me, he challenged me, but he basically said, what you're curious about, I'll let you do. And that really happens in life. So um, I love my job, and but then I was working as a consultant for a lot of government agencies. And actually before being at the Post, I was always a, pretty much a consultant when I wasn't running the back office. So I was working at the State Department, and I met my next mentor. And these were never like mentors. These were you know coworkers or friends or whatever. And so we work together in the office of, um, it's called AIM at the State Department, which is the head of um, information management. And we just hit it off, you know. And so he became basically the consulting 
head of diplomatic security, the, but the branch that did the IT stuff. So we write the policy for the embassies and consulates. And um, so I was on the modernization part of um, this department, not the security part. So we were basically um, upgrading the state from Wang DS to Microsoft Everywhere, which ruined the bandwidth everywhere. But anyway, that's a long story. Um, but um, so he said, hey, you know, why should you get into security? And I'm like, well, I'm kind of scared, you know. And that's the other thing, too. Another lesson that I've learned is that whenever I'm kind of scared, I have a big knot in my stomach, and I'm a little bit of panic, go for it. <laughs> it's like, <coughs> grab on and do it, which is really hard. <coughs> so I quit my job with my boss, who basically said, you can do whatever you want. Um, and I went with this friend, Eddie Schwartz, who was a wonderful person in the industry. He was the chief security officer um, of RSA for a while. Um, and uh, he and I worked at Diplomatic Security, and that's how I became um, in the information security industry. But he was another one, and the thing that I will also want to emphasize about great mentors is um, they challenge you. Sometimes you get really mad at them because they throw you in the deep end, and they see if you can swim or not, and they might not be entirely positive. <laughs> but he would say, go do this. And I'd be like, I don't want to do that. We'll figure it out, you know? <laughs> okay? And so that's how I learned information security. Then my next great mentor came along. I did that for a while. Paul Connolly, who was a beautiful, beautiful man, um, partner at PricewaterhouseCoopers. They were doing a pen test against state. So he was looking for people who were starting the, the Pricewaterhouse um, ethical hacking and information security practice um, in the Atlantic. And so I interviewed with him, and on Eddie's recommendation, um, I joined PwC as part of their very technical, they had like an ethical hacking um, group. And I just remember. Um, one thing, because I've never gotten a four-year college degree, and so one of the things that Paul did is he made sure that I could become a partner if I wanted to be with an associate's degree. And so I remember sitting at Price Waterhouse, and we were going around the circle of these new hires and telling everybody about themselves, and the people from the Naval Academy and the Air Force Academy, and I'm like, well, I got my new degree from Nova. <laughs> and I was so scared. Woo! And yeah, shout out. Okay, Nova's an awesome school, and I'm proud of Nova. I mean, nothing, you know, but it was intimidating to be, you know, with these people that had, you know, in most cases, advanced degrees as well from very famous colleges. But Paul also was like another tremendous mentor where he made sure that, number one, he said, Stacy, I understand you're technical, but you have to decide. Do you want to be technical or do you want to be a different career path? Do you want to eventually become a partner or, you know, be in you know, management and eventually become a chief security officer? It's actually amazing to me how many people from that group are now chief security officers in the Fortune 100, you know, kind of what you get in your Fortune 500. Um, and it was a hard choice, and he kept on putting me in uncomfortable situations where I had to manage and run and do projects and everything else. And um, that's really how I became um, able to eventually become a chief security officer, is because everything that he encouraged me and forced me and <laughs> pushed me to learn. And so you're hearing a third recurring theme here, and that's what I wanted to say. Everybody here who mentors people, you make such a huge difference. I mean, I don't know what I would have done without these people. Um, I had no direction whatsoever coming out of high school, and uh, they really made me into the person that I am. I also want to say for people who are aspiring to become, you know, information security people, that anything is possible. If you love and you have passion for your work, um, if you're curious, if you're nosy, like we're talking at my table, I think that's a really key aspect of being a security person. I think I'm very nosy. That's why that happened. Um, so I just, you know, I just want to encourage that, you know, that anything really is possible and that, um, that just how absolutely critical mentoring is and how huge a difference you make, even if you don't even realize it. Um, and also, if you have mentors and you know, you get that uncomfortable feeling that you should be doing something, that that's a really, really good thing. Um, I want to thank you all for having me here tonight, and I want to thank you for the opportunity to speak here tonight. I want to thank you for all the work that you do, and um, just keep on keeping on. You're doing amazing things. Thank you so much. Thank you. Sorry, I just want my sidekick. Without <laughs> <laughs> slacking somewhere, I had to round her up. Because you have to keep me honest. Here. Oh, and see, look, she's slacking on the job. Right, I mean, she has one job. If you found a white today, you had to hand out and put the letters and then hand out prizes, right?
you come to work for me, then we'll talk about what your job is. Can I get a picture of the water? Right here? Right here? Mm-hmm. You're going to Photoshop something in there? <laughs> I'll put your logo there. Yes, I Thank you. One more, one more. Oh, yeah. Uh, So I think we want to bring up the Isaac of people.